I'm Atubo George. Now, today is Friday. Now, this is the first Friday in the month of September. Listen, it doesn't matter how many days have gone and things have not been well, things are about to turn around for your good. Praise God. Are you ready to see that? Come on now. Let's call for that daily bread. Join me as we declare. Say it with me. Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Angels, go and make these words to be so. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. Praise God. A miracle is coming your way today. Praise God. I'm telling you the truth. Now, can we go into today's message? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you. I pray right now, everyone, under the sound of my voice, I declare, indeed, they begin to see that you have gone ahead of them this month. You have made the crooked path straight. Thank you for the glory that you have ordained for their lives. It is being made manifest now. In Jesus' name, I declare burdens are being lifted right now. Yokes are being destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, praise God. Now, we are still on a series I titled The Power of the Renewed Mind. Why is it so important that we renew our mind? Why is it important? God wants us to renew our mind. Why does God want us to renew our mind? Because He had a plan for your life. Not only did He plan for your life, He spoke about those plans. He spoke about them from the beginning. Hey, He's got things written about you. Many of it you don't even know. The fact that you don't know them doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Just like I was telling you yesterday, listen, the Bible is full of prophecies. You know, we're reading what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. He said, don't think that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but I have come to fulfill. Now, I was telling you yesterday that things that have been written concerning you, things have been spoken concerning you because they have been written first in heaven. Oh, yeah. They were written in heaven. Yes. They were written in heaven. That's why Jesus said we should pray that prayer when he was teaching the disciples the Lord's Prayer. He said, pray that the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, many people think he was saying, you know, if there are streets of gold in heaven, there should be streets of gold here. No, that's not what Jesus was talking about. What Jesus was saying is this. Pray that the will of God be done on earth exactly as it is written in heaven. Because in heaven, there are words and writings. What writings? The things God has said concerning you. They are all there, written in books. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Your life is a book. The book is not the book you will write. You are here to fulfill the book that is written concerning you. Now, I was telling you yesterday, so it's not everything that is here in this Bible, in this book we call the Bible. Not everything is here. For example, you don't find your name here. Last like I was sharing my story with you yesterday. There have been, and there are many prophecies like that over your life. Some you've heard, some you've never heard. And no man truly can give all the prophecies over your life. You may meet a prophet today who says, Thus say the Lord, this is a... He will still not be able to tell you everything. So how do I know then to fulfill? I'll tell you. Praise God. That's what we're talking about. There is, there is one God have given to us. And he is the Holy Spirit. That's what we call him. Holy Spirit. And Jesus said his job in your life is to teach you all things. And to guide you into all truth which truth 
When Jesus is talking about truth, he's not talking, were you there last night or not? Okay, let me tell the truth. I was actually there. That's not the kind of truth he was referring to. The truth he was referring to is according to that thing which was written in heaven. So you see, if the truth in the, or concerning your life is that you be in a certain place, even at this time, it is the job of the Holy Spirit to guide you into that truth. But you see, the challenge most times that a lot of people have that they are not walking in the truth, even though the Holy Spirit is walking seriously over their lives, but they don't see the results. The, 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 the problem is this, that they don't yield their minds to what the Holy Spirit is doing. There is someone, for example, you know, you, you may hear the Holy Spirit tell you, oh, go to Susan So City and do something. And then you go there, but you don't like the city. And you don't like it for many things maybe you must have heard. Or you are too comfortable where you are. And then let's say go to that city. And then you go to the city. Oh, wow, came back, came back. And then the Lord tells you again, go to that city again. And then you go to the city and come back. He tells you the third time, go to that city. By the third time, you should be smart enough to begin to ask him, Lord, am I called to that city? See, now that is how the process of renewing your mind starts. So you begin to say, am I called to that city? Because sometimes if you don't ask he may not even tell you. Uh, he will continue to give instructions. He will give instructions you follow. But it's sometimes, especially even preachers do that. And many, many believers do it. You are being used by God, but you don't yield yourself to him. You see? So God uses you, but your life is still a mess. Why is your life a mess? Because the fact that God is using you doesn't mean you will live well or you will live right. For you to live right, it's got to be a conscious decision. Not just right now. When I mean right now, I mean well and right. See, for example, you can be a preacher. You pray for people and they receive miracles, financial miracles. And, and you are there like, ah, I pray for people. They just come back and tell me, so so person called me and gave me a contract. Hey, look at me. Nobody even gives me anything. I stay in this village and I'm just praying for people and, and nothing is happening in my life. The fact that there's an anointing on your life to bless people doesn't mean you will enjoy that anointing. The only way you'll be able to enjoy that anointing is when you yield yourself to the teaching of that anointing. Let me show you something. First John. First John. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Chapter 2, verse 27. It says, But the anointing which you have received of him abided in you, and you need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things and is true and is no lie, and even as it had taught you, you shall abide in him. Did you see that? Listen. Every anointing carries with it a teaching. If you don't understand the teaching of the anointing, now, whatever you're anointed for, if you're anointed to heal the sick, a man can be anointed to heal the sick and yet he will be sick. He, he can be sick and still go lay hands on people and they will be well, but he is still sick. Why? And, and he, he, he will be prayed, oh Father, I'm healing people, you're using me. God, why don't you heal me? And God will be silent. You know why God is silent? Because he has already spoken. How did he speak? You see that anointing you receive? Every anointing, that's how you know an anointing that is from God. If an anointing does not carry a teaching with it, it's not from God. You got it from somewhere. Uh, or you are just an extension of, of, of an anointing. Say, for example, you know, as, as a minister, if I'm anointed to do a certain thing, I can, by extension, lay hands on someone to help me go do that thing. See, and the person goes there 
and carries out the assignments and he'll see the same thing that happens when I minister will happen when he's ministry. But it's, you know something? The teaching of that anointing will not follow that person except I teach the person. See, But every anointing that comes from God upon your life carries with it a teaching. So if you don't pay attention to the teaching of the anointing, you'll be a mess. The young prophet that God sent, you know, he, he got there and, and he began to prophesy and, and declare what God had commanded him to declare. And the king wanted to arrest him. King's church is to get him. The Bible said the king's hand withered. Now that's one of few times where you see a king judged instantly against the man of God. Very few occasions you see that. Because the king, every king carries an anointing on him. Yeah, that's the truth. So you hardly see God go against a king. You know, you hardly see when a, a man of God and a king clash. That's a clash that God doesn't want to ever happen. But if they do you, unusual cases like this one, but guess what? This man's life was still wasted. Why was his life wasted? I mean, I'm talking about the prophet now. Why was his life wasted? Because he did not follow the clear teachings of the anointing that he carried to that place. The anointing taught him, don't eat there. The same road you came from, don't go back on that same road. He, he disobeyed that teaching and then he died. He died. Nothing could save him. Every anointing carries with it a teaching. If you disregard the teaching of the anointing, now, beyond the anointing to minister, the anointing to do specific things, every child of God carries an anointing. That's why John says, you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. Now, why do you know all things? You know everything you're supposed to do. Now, he tells us here, now, this 1 John 2, 27, he is talking to every believer, everyone that have received the Holy Ghost. The call to be a Christian carries with it an anointing. The moment you receive Christ into your life, an anointing was released upon your life. And the call to be a child of God itself, now that's what he is referring to here. That call, that first call to be a child of God, that call to to, to just be born again. Carries an anointing. And he said, that anointing which you have received, it abides in you. And, you know, he says, you don't need that any man should teach you. The truth is, no man can teach you. Now, he's not saying, like, what I'm doing, I'm teaching you by, by, by God's grace. I'm, I'm teaching the things that the Lord has taught me. Now, what I'm doing, what I'm doing in your life is to make you aware. But you see, your journey in life, no amount of anointing from another person can teach you. Ten of you might be sent out to start a business. And God says, go start the business. Well, guess what? The teaching for 10 of you will not be the same. There is the one that the Lord will say, look, because of this, because of this, because of this. Now that's what I say. When, when that teaching begins to happen, and that's where we're going to, and I trust the Spirit of God, next week we'll begin to go into details. Because of that teaching that begins to take place, this is where your life is changed. As that teaching begins to come, you... Receiving that teaching, begin to apply it in your mind. Not your spirit. It's coming from your spirit. But now you need to begin to apply it in your mind. As you apply it in your mind, what do you think is going on? A renewal begins to take place. So I used to think like this before, but right now I think like this. Why? A renewal has taken place. But guess what? That renewal didn't come from another person. That renewal came from the anointing that is coming from within me. And as I yield myself more and more 
to the renewal of my mind by the teachings of the anointing in me. See, many times you are not making progress because you are trying to be like another person. No, sir. You are supposed to listen to the teachings of the anointing in you and change your life. Focus on that which the anointing is telling you to do. And you will see the mega transformation that is going to take place in your life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Our time is up. Let me tell you this. As you apply your mind to these teachings. Ali Dekene. New doors are opening to you. New, new things are beginning to happen in your new experiences you will begin to see. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This week, I declare, this weekend will be the best you have ever experienced. In Jesus' name. I'll see you on Monday. God bless you.